Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. We are your hosts, Bull and P. And today, really me, I want to talk about why I'm starting to get concerned, P. I don't know if you are concerned, but we'll kind of touch on that as we get further into the show. Uh, you know, we talked about having three guys initially to start this week off coming up on visits this weekend from the transfer portal. And right now we only have one, at least as far as I know, and that's Holden Stays. That's the tight end. Um, so, you know, we most definitely are going to be needing him. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But biggest thing for me is that Juice Wells is off of the list. And what I've been hearing is that it's because of his injury and because he's asking for too much money. Now, again, I don't really know what that means, but I'm going to emphasize this one more time for everybody. If you want to win championships, you know, we can tell you how the team needs to be built. OK, we can tell you what it's supposed to look like right now. Our wide receiver core is nowhere near that. Now, we do have some young studs coming in that could potentially turn into the types of players that you would want or, you know, need in a championship team. But. We haven't seen our true freshman play a whole lot at wide receiver up under Coach Heupel, so that's very concerning to me. Pete, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen the young guys play, like guys like Nathan Laycock, who, you know, the kind of the knock on him coming out of, coming out of camp and spring ball was the drops. Mm -hmm. He was dropping the ball, and like you always say, you know, not really picking up the offense. Well, why is it so complicated? What's so complicated about playing wide receiver, you know, this offense? Does Coach need to dumb it down to give these young guys a chance? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you haven't seen him play. You expect a guy like uh, Mike Matthews coming here and play. Anytime you got a five-star guy, you expect them to be ready to come here and play. Mm. I'm not sure what his whole deal is as far as if he's, an, if he's an early enrollee or not. I think he is, yeah. I think he, yeah, he should be. I, I think, I think Braylon Staley is. Braylon well. Staley is, too. And I think that. As far I, as I know. Yeah. I want to say Braylon Staley, I heard, will be here for bowl practice as well. Yeah. Um, I think I think that Mike's going to be here for it, too. Yeah, which is huge. Those yeah. guys, they got to get the head start. Go ahead and get up get up here. Get used to playing against D1, SEC caliber defensive backs. Yeah. You know, linebackers, safeties, the whole deal. And, you know, figure out whatever it's going to take because we're going to need those guys to play. If we, if we don't add some guys in the portal, right? You just talked about uh, Juice yeah. Wells. He's probably pretty much off table. So let's just assume Boomer McCoy's not coming back. Mm -hmm. We're, I mean, so 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 who's your starting three? What well, you got Squirrel White for sure, right? Squirrel's out there. Squirrel. Um, and then, you know, you'd have to probably go with Mike Matthews. Um, it's because he was so highly touted. Mm -hmm. But I also think that Braylon Staley, Braylon Staley is just as good of a ball player. I think he's a um, And that's not a knock on Mike by any means. No, because yeah, I think Staley's that Mike Matthews is, is a dog. They're, yeah. both dogs. They're both dogs. Uh, Nathan Leacock is a guy that I really like. Now, some of y'all are probably going to say, well, you're kind of like glancing over some of the veterans. Dante Thornton. Honestly speaking, I just don't really trust him. I don't care where he's playing, okay? there's it, it. Listen, it doesn't matter about not being able to catch balls, playing it slot or not. Either you can catch in key situations or you can. Yeah. And if it takes a small little move like that to throw you off mentally where you can't start catching passes, I mean, I honestly, I mean, I'm happy to have him on this roster, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying if I was a coach, that would have been it for me. Because if you can't handle crunch time situation yeah. stuff, you're not going to be able to help us out in crunch time situations, period. Yeah. yeah. So, now, now, yeah, now the, the one thing I'll give to Thornton, mm -hmm. Jalen Hyatt was a good kind of, whatever the word you want to use, a, a freaking uh, sample size. Because mm -hmm. you know, I saw him year one, hype, but didn't do much. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the second year, he wins Blitnikoff Award. So, yeah. I mean, Thornton on point. paper is everything you want. 6'5", two, you know, 215, mm -hmm. probably a... Probably a Four, four three four 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 sub four four guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. say four three. I mean, yeah. probably sub four four guy. Um, everything went on paper. He he started to kind of look like he was looking better towards you know the end of his season before he got hurt. Is he a guy that takes that jump that 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 gen height jump? We'll call it that height jump. Let's take that jump. Hopefully, um, right now, yeah. I mean, pretty much like you said. I mean, looking at squirrel. You're looking at. Most likely, Mike Matthews will be starting somewhere. And then, I mean, you know, we still got Chaz Nimrod and we still got Caleb yeah, Webb. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I listen, they were serviceable, right? Serviceable. But I'm talking about winning championships. I'm talking about what it's going to take for this team to need to win championships, mm -hmm. especially with the way that the roster is starting to shape up now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the 2022 season, we, you know, our passing game was great. Running game was also very, very good. This season, it kind of flip-flopped. Okay, we lean more on our running game. It's not going to be able to be that way next season. 
Yeah. Okay. It's just not like it, that's mm-hmm. we're gonna have to be able to throw well, the ball. I mean, the way, way I look more. at it, you know, we talk about all the time. I typically look at the best. So I'm looking mm-hmm. at how do we match up against Bam? How do we match up against George? Yep. Those teams are probably gonna play a lot of man coverage against you. And do you feel comfortable with the receivers we have, Nimrod, the whole bunch, mm-hmm. winning one on one press man against five star DBs? And that's what it comes down to. You know, I look at guys like Mike Matthews coming into it. I like him. I think yeah. he'll be able to do it. Staley. I think, I think Staley will be able that. to do it. Um, Squirrel shown that he can win his fair share. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, but, I mean, has, has Dr. Thornton shown you enough? You know, I mean, has. I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm just telling you. I'm just, and, you know, both of us played. Yeah. I'm telling you from, from playing. He's one of those guys, and he doesn't necessarily look like Tarzan. But, you know, that whole phrase is about, like, they look like they should they be great. Yeah, like, be everything ball. is there. Everything, you know, on paper, physically, it all looks great. Right. But if you come and jam them, okay, if, if you do some of that down South Georgia stuff that, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. that you know that they're doing, right, is he going to be able to sustain that for a 60-minute game? That is what I'm talking about, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, that's the part that we've got to get to. We need dogs. To me, Dante Thornton, and I'm sorry, man, like I want him to be, and I hope that he proves me wrong. I've said it several times. He's not a dog. He's yeah, just not. So, that. you know, I'm saying all that just to say, I have a huge question mark and concern about the wide receiver position. And as we kind of go through more of this, I've got a big concern about why are we not willing to spend more NIL money? Do we not have it to spend? That is very concerning because yeah. college football is going to the people that are spending. Mm-hmm. We know the Oregon is, if you look in the transfer portal right now, not to get too far off on this tangent, because I wanted to keep this video short, but there's so much for us to yeah. talk about. Yeah. Oregon yeah. is a team that is spending and they're getting, like they're probably about to get Walter Nolan. They're the Jeez. front runner uh, favorites for that. Every single season in the portal since NIL started and, 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 and open up. Gabriel. Yes, they are going out and getting guys because they're spending. You've got to spend. We've got to spend. We've got to take those chances. Mm-hmm. Now, with all that being said, I don't know if I want to go to defense next or if I want to stay with the offense. Let's just stick with the offense. Yeah, let's. I mean, what, go should we go to tight ends? I mean, look at That's tight ends. That's just what I was about to talk about. Just, yeah. Tight ends we next. We just lost uh, Jonathan Eccles. Okay. Okay. Lost him to uh, UC, USF. Mm-hmm. Now you listen to Austin Price. He says, you know, the staff wasn't really worried about that. Didn't really care about. It. And you know, me personally, from what I've seen from him, haven't watched this film, you know, in probably you know a couple months. Mm-hmm. But from what I saw from him, I mean, I kind of felt you know I wasn't overly impressed with him. I felt like maybe he was a little bit undersized and was kind of similar to the reason you see us maybe turn down of Justin Jolly. Wasn't quite the physical. I don't know, dude. We need. Uh, Jonathan Eccles. I wasn't. Jonathan not, Eccles was looks like impressed. he's about. Nah, man. Listen, he. I, I don't know about being undersized because he's a solid six foot five, and he looks like he's got to be. I mean, I'm gonna give him at the bare minimum watching him on film from this past season, mm-hmm. at least two thirty five, and I'm talking wow. about at least. Wow. There's no way that he's any lighter than that. There's just, there's just no way. Yeah, if he, if, if he's that size, I don't understand why we just let him go. I, and that's I okay. That so, but that is my whole point. Okay, even if you didn't absolutely love what he was doing on film, there was something that you felt like, ah, you know, this might not be the best. We have one scholarship tight end slotted to play for this team next season. One, uno. So you don't just push guys to the side. We pushed away too. So him, Justin Jolie, who I feel more about, like what you're saying with Mm -hmm. Jonathan Eccles, I feel more about that way with Justin Jolie. He was really more of a pass catcher. He was more like a big wide receiver. We don't like, our system doesn't really fit that mold. We need a real legitimate tight end and, you know, if you can go out and be like an Ethan Davis who could be an absolute total stud, then, you know, that's just icing on the cake. Yeah. And I'll, I'll also say this, and I've said it several times, Ethan Davis is very injury prone. Exactly. The staff should know that. Yeah. They, this is something that they should most definitely know. He's been hurt several times since he started playing football, which, oh, by the way, has not been long. Oh. Okay. I think he's gotten hurt every single season that he's played. Yeah, you know, I mean, and I, I could be off on that. No, I mean, you you almost count him as a, almost like a half of half a guy. Mm-hmm. So we got a half tight end because we were, you know, like you said, you know, we don't want to ill will on anybody. Oh yeah, no, no, it's okay? nothing like that. But you're almost assuming based on history that he's not going to finish the season. So okay, half tight end. So let's just assume that history repeats itself and mm-hmm. he gets hurt sometime during the season. Who's your tight end? You don't have anybody because. You're not going to put the guy from uh, London, you know what I'm saying, by way yeah. of Africa out there because he's still learning. Now, he's a phenomenal yeah. athlete. I'm about a Koye. Yeah, so, yeah Koye. right. So he's still learning, but he's not 
I mean, it's going to take him, I would say, at least all of next season before we can kind of, uh, we're going to push him out. You know what I'm yeah, saying? At least if you're talking about, yeah, like if you're talking about him playing tight end, mm -hmm. it takes a lot, which is why I felt like he should have been playing on defense because it doesn't take as much to right. figure that out. You just, ball. yeah, you just go hunt. You can throw him out there in a random situation. Go get that quarterback, son. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like more or less. There's a few other things that you have to teach, but whole point is this. I feel like we have mismanaged the hell out of the tight end position, okay? Now, we're going after Holden Stays from Notre Dame. That's one guy. Going off of what we just said, we just lost Jonathan Eccles. We know that, um, you know, Ethan Davis is the only guy and he's injury prone. Mm -hmm. Right now, I said before that we needed two. Right now, we need three. We need three. And that's three. just for me. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel. I feel like we need three tight ends. I think so. We need to try to go out and, you know, maybe try to get two younger guys and go out and get one back. Now, I, I know we're looking at the guy from Southeast Louisiana. Uh, mm. What's his, what's his class? Sharp. I'm, not, yeah. I'm not sure his, his class. I think that he is a younger guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully he's younger And he's guy. got good size. Yeah, he's about 6'5", two, close to 240 in that yeah. range. Um, you know, 240, 245 maybe. So, I mean, he could potentially be a guy that plugs in. And, yet, I mean, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm always a guy that's always trying to give guys benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that this staff feels confident in holding stays. Mm -hmm. They feel confident in this guy from Southeast Louisiana. Um, and maybe that's why they weren't so big on, you know, okay, Ethan Davis or not Ethan Davis. Uh, John Eccles. Eccles. Yeah, Eccles leaving. Because, I mean, we need at least two guys. I mean, at least. I think that, I think that that is all BS. I think that that whole narrative, and I don't mean to undermine anybody, you know, like I absolutely love Austin Price. I'm not saying that he's lying, mm -hmm. but I think that maybe somebody fed him some, fed him, fed him some BS. Maybe. Because that just doesn't make any logical sense. We should not be turning away tight ends that are already committed, especially young ones. Yeah, especially high caliber guys. Yeah, I mean. that makes no sense. Because even if, like, let's just say, and we talked about this, you know, on, on, on the previous video, mm -hmm. that Jonathan Eccles could potentially have come in and have been, uh, you know, the best pass rusher on this team. And, oh, by the way, we're going to get to this later on. Tyler Barron's going. He could have been a guy that not only could stop the run like Tyler Barron, mm -hmm. but also could get after the passer. Yeah. So that's just like if everything else kind of pans out the way we wanted it to, maybe we could throw him over there. And, I mean, right. you know, it's a whole lot of moving pieces to it. Yeah. But, and, 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 yeah. and, and you got to wonder, I mean, you mentioned this in your video the other day about Carson Gentle. Mm -hmm. Is he a guy that they're looking at potentially moving a tight end? It's got to be something that I mean, we're not seeing. Yeah, there's, there's got to be something. I mean, That you, has to be. You have to hope there's a master plan behind the scenes that we're maybe yeah. not privy to. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of in the camp that I'm going to give this staff a bit of the doubt and kind of see how it shakes out. But if we show up, you know, to camp here, you know, and what, six, seven months, however long it is, how many months it ends up being until camp, mm -hmm. and we only have one scholarship tight end. Oh, that's, I mean, that, that's, that, that's, that's when I'm going to lose it. You know what I mean? Because, I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, but that's not even, that, so that's not going to be possible because they're just not going to do that off of the sheer fact of numbers. You just cannot do that. So do what will end up happening if we don't hit on the guys that we want? And this is where I was going to with it. If we don't hit on the holding stays on the other guy, uh, you know, on any of these other tight end targets or anyone else, that, or especially tight end, we are going to have to overpay for somebody that we didn't really want or value, which brings it back full circle that the whole theory of Jonathan Eccles being kind of like, it was like a mutual deal. Mm -hmm. That has got to be BS. There's no planet where that makes logical sense unless we get some big news, you know, either today, you know, at some point next week, very, very soon about two, at least two tight ends committing to Tennessee that are really, really good and have been high up on our list. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I just wanted to kind of point that out just to say that, that's huge you know, like that, that's the number one place where I'm very, very concerned and I need to see something happening. Now, talk briefly about Tyler Barron leaving, okay? So I've seen and heard some people saying, well, it's not that big of a loss. So for us, you know, we expected for Tyler Barron to, uh, to go into the NFL draft. And he didn't do it for whatever reason. He's in the transfer portal. Now that could be just to try to see what his options are. He might still try to go and he might still try to go in, into the draft. Um, but my whole thing with that is if he doesn't and if he transfers out, if he was going to come back and play college football for one more year and he didn't come here, that's a huge deal because a lot of times I feel like fans think that, oh, well, you know, I didn't hear his name so much. So he's not he's not a big deal to this defense. Tyler Barron was like by far, mm -hmm. and I don't even know who the close second would have been by far our best 
run stopping defensive end by far. Now, For sure. some people are trying to say that he's a tackle. He played tackle in our rabbits package. Yeah. He was a very versatile football player. Now, you know, he a lot of people say that, you know, he was one foot, uh, one foot in at Tennessee, one foot out. That could very well be true. And oh, by the way, he played hard on. Field. Yeah. And I mean, you know, oh, by the way, he's number two in sacks for you this past season. Whenever he's motivated for whatever his motivation is, he is a extremely productive player, mm -hmm. you know, in this system on this team. Sure. So for him not coming back, that's a huge deal. Yeah. We don't do have you anybody, know? I was I mean, gonna say, do you know of anybody? Who we don't have. Him? We don't have. Here's the deal, because I've seen it on Twitter, people, you know, they say Todd Brand is leaving. You look at the comments, a lot of people talking about guys like James Pierce, Jordan Ross, Caleb. You know, let me tell you, those guys don't play the same position. Okay. Yeah. Tyler Barron was what, about 6'5, 275? Yeah. Something he like was, that. Probably, he was yeah. a true run stopping DN that mm -hmm. could, like you just said, bump inside, play inside. The James Pierce's, the Caleb Herring's, the Shane Bradley's, those guys are rushers. Yeah, okay? those are all pass rushers. Those are not run stopping guys. And as far as. And they don't stop the run well at all. Even don't. James Pierce. He does not. Like Jam James Pierce might be, he might have been the second best guy. I mean, you could almost even throw Dominic Bailey into that, but Dominic mm -hmm. Bailey gives you no real pass rush. Yeah, he's not. Um, and, you know, I'm not trying to be hard on I'm not trying to, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm we're, saying? We're just keeping 100% with yeah. you guys. And, like, we don't really have anyone on the roster except for Tyree Weathersby that fits he the, would be the mold one. of and we didn't get, Barron. Yeah, and we didn't get to see him play at all this season. You know, he had, like, a dislocated hip or something. Yeah, you know, something, something, yeah. something to do with his hip. A serious injury. And, uh, you know, Tyree Weathersby, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just going to say he's about 6'5", 250, probably his true freshman. You know, maybe he'll be up close. I to think that he's bigger season. than that. He might be. Uh, he definitely yeah. be. You know, definitely closer to that Tyler Barron size by the time yeah. the season starts next year for sure. Um, but right now, I mean, he's a true freshman last year. He and he didn't play at all, so he's pretty much true freshman again this season, uh, or you know, next season. So yeah. I mean, right now, as it looks, he's your he's your replacement for Tyler Barron. We don't have anybody else. Yeah, that I can think of. I mean, what Tyree West. Yeah. I mean, we don't have anybody. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's a huge concern for me. And, you know, we're going to have to hit the portal, find another guy. I know we're, looking, we're trying to get that Juco guy. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know his name, but yeah. everybody's after him. Georgia, Bama, everybody's after the guy. So we'll see if we can win him out. But he's about the same size, about 6'5", 270. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of buzz around him. But, I mean, as of, as, it, as it sits now for our current roster, it's, it's Tyree Wesby. He's the only guy that fits to be able to replace a Tyler Barron on paper. Yeah, and I mean, that right there in itself is extremely concerning. Now, you couple that with the fact that uh, Tyler Barron is step brothers with, with Wesley Walker, and it sounds like Wesley Walker is also going to probably hit that transfer portal, okay? It sounds like he's not going to be back. That's huge, okay? He was our best safety last season. We already know that Tank is gone. He doesn't, He can't play anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Gabe Judy Lally is probably a guy who was going to be gone as well, okay? Now, he could come back, but probably not going to, okay? We know that Slaughter already talked about he's going to come into the portal, yep. all right? Um, and then, you know, I think that the biggest one is T-Mac. I'm hearing that T-Mac is also gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm hearing that, you know, we will hear more about that on Monday, you know, that it will, it will be official on Monday. We've lost our entire starting secondary, okay? Now, a lot of fans, again, and you know, I, I'm not blaming y'all, but I just, I'm bringing this to the forefront so that y'all can understand. Bashed our secondary so much all of last season. The problem really was not with our secondary. Now they weren't perfect, yeah. but I think that they played well. They're a solid. lot of what we saw was passes being completed because of our linebackers not being in the, uh, in the correct spots. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it also had to do with some of the scheme now. We didn't have guys that were true man-to-man -man coverage guys, um, you know, outside of, I'd say, Haddon. Uh, Turn time was uh, one. You know, I think that Slaughter, when he's healthy, he was one. Mm -hmm. uh, now, T-Mag actually did a very good job at star playing, man. Yeah. You know, people would make catches and perfect passes yeah, on him. He was him, in good position. But, yeah, he was in great position, good and position. He, I mean, he was huge in that run game. Yeah, he people was a linebacker. Just, yeah, I mean, he was a linebacker that was covering everybody. Tight ends, yeah. slot guys, wide receivers. He was covering them extremely versatile. He meant a whole lot to this team. Everyone that we're losing that can come back honestly meant a lot to this team. And we really needed them to come back um, because right now what, what we have is a secondary with, I believe, what I have here, one, two, three, four, five, six scholarship guys. But I don't think that's right because I think there's one that I'm missing. I think we might have seven scholarship guys coming back next season as it sits right now. We could have even less yeah so i mean that's yeah. gonna be a young secondary the way it looks now 
looking at your starting your starting group next season. I mean, a corner you're you're obviously expecting Ricky Gibson to hold down one of the spots. Yeah. Which I, feel, I mean, that's the thing. You feel good about your young guys, but you haven't seen them play and experience. I mean, it goes a huge long way, mm-hmm. especially talking about SEC. You need that experience. Um, but I do feel good about Ricky Gibson. Mm-hmm. I feel good about Jordan Matthews, even though you know it seems like. Um, there's a little bit of maybe disappointment with kind of how he performed kind of yeah. in camp and spring and all the whole deal. Um, you got Rick Gibson, you got Kirsten Kanye, who I'm big on. I think he's the guy that reminds me a lot of myself. Mm-hmm. I got, I came into college a little bit undersized, mm-hmm. but in terms of just, you know, uh, physical ability and ability to cover. And I mean, he's got that length though. Yeah. He's got you kind of everything you yeah. want. Just want to put on weight, which is going to happen, you know, being, being in college for a full year. So you feel good about, you know, like I said, Gibson, uh, Matthews, Conyer, Conyers, um, but then behind that, who do you have? Who's your safeties? You like John Slaughter. John Slaughter, You yeah. like John, uh, Jordan Thomas play you a safety, a star. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he definitely, you know, he, he was a backup. So, you know, he, he was, was behind backup. T-Mac. Um, I think that he would be serviceable. I mean, he didn't look great playing star. He, he looked better look as the season went on. He might be better suited to go back there and play safety. Yeah. You've also got Christian Charles, who's kind of played ball. I forget about him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and he was hurt. Much, he can play corner, too. He can yeah. do a lot of different things. He can do a whole lot of different things. But, you know, he was hurt. But I do believe that he can come back next mm-hmm. season. Hopefully he does. Yeah. You know, we haven't heard a whole, a whole lot about that. So, I think about that. I mean, I mean, and, and then from there, we're looking at true freshmen, which we've talked about this off air. Well, Ke- uh, Caleb Beasley. Or who are you talking about? Who, you have another guy? So I was going to say that Turrentine, you know, okay. So he's a, he's a red shirt sophomore. He can also come back. And so like, let me just, let me just go down this list of who I have on here. Okay. So Kristen Charles, who's a junior this season, who would be a senior next season. Kristen Conyer, who's a freshman, who would be a sophomore. Andre Turrentine, who's a red shirt sophomore. He would be a red shirt junior. Ricky Gibson, Jordan Matthews, and John Slaughter are all freshmen. They will all be sophomores next season. And the one that I'm missing, um, is uh Christian Christian Harrison. Mm, Christian Harrison. So about him. He is another very versatile player and I don't yeah. I don't know what his class is, but I want to say that he would he's, probably either be a junior or a senior. He's the same class. He's he was a year before his last class. So Yeah, so he's about three years. Okay. So yeah, he's, he's either like a red shirt sophomore or he's a junior. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, he's a guy that you know he definitely does give a lot of options. Yeah, he's you know I think he goes about six one, which is tall. Yeah. I thought he was, but you know he's he's built. Yeah, um, he could like you said could play probably all three of the positions, whether it's safety, star, corner, mm-hmm. probably do all three of those. And then you know you look at the freshman coming into it. We talk about Caleb Beasley being a guy that you know, hopefully we hopefully we ever get all those guys to the finish line first of all. Right. But Beasley's a guy I think comes in here ready to play. Um, yeah, and he's again versatile. I think he could probably potentially play all, any of the three positions. I think yeah. see him moving to safety, star, safety, star, corner. He could definitely um, do it. And I think even Blue Carter's a guy that could potentially play all three. Honestly, I think he'd yeah. play star, safety, corner. Yeah. Um. So we got guys we're coming in that we're kind of high on, but yeah. Again, we haven't seen these guys, so it definitely is cause for concern. Yeah, know? and I mean, you know, you're, you're talking about throwing some true freshmen true out freshmen. there. You know, if nothing, at, at the bare minimum, a lot of these young guys, I mean, most of the guys are very, very young. Yeah. If they're not starting, they're going to be the next man up. They're going to have to rotate in because you're going to have to rotate your secondary. Mm-hmm. And we just do not have the pieces. We don't have the bodies. Now, uh, we are targeting the cornerback, um, right. Saeed Gibbs, mm-hmm. okay, the one thing that I have read about him, though, is that his position coach, uh, at some point, I want to say it was in his freshman season. I think he's a redshirt freshman this year. He went to a different school. I forget what school it is. I think it was a Texas school, I want to say. Yeah, maybe. TCU but they are also like targeting him, and they are really West the front-running favorites. Okay, yeah, it was. But now, he is a very, very good player. Like, he mm-hmm. puts us in the mind of Ricky Gibson a lot. Just a pure cover corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, very, very disciplined in his technique. And he will come up and, you know, he will make tackles. So, you know, he would be a great addition to this football team, uh, to this roster. But I don't really have a whole lot of confidence right now in us in the transfer portal because we're losing a lot of these battles with guys that you know, you can say whatever you want, but we're needing these guys. Now, Walter Nolan is not a guy that I feel like we necessarily absolutely need. But Juice Wells or someone like that okay mm-hmm. it doesn't have to necessarily be juice wells but coach show me something right yeah. like show us something so game. that i can get more comfortable but we need something at the wide receiver position and oh by the way let's go back to defense okay mm-hmm. linebacker we're very very young there as well okay keenan pilly he's he's a great player said the same thing about ethan davis these guys are injury prone okay they get hurt at the drop of a dime now you know we've got 
two, I feel like two to three really good linebackers, uh, you know, behind Keenan or, you know, playing side by side with him, interchangeable. And then we've got two more good ones coming in this season, but I feel like we should try to go out and add, you know, another young depth piece guy if we can in that transfer portal. Like, I just want to see this team like really addressing the needs and showing the common sense to understand that, hey, yeah. Even though these guys are coming back or they're injury prone, we've got to do more at that position. And, you know, almost, I hate to say it like this, but you almost have to kind of say or look at it like, we're not really even expecting for these guys to make it through the season. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Which yeah. which is, that's just such a, I, I hate saying that because it's negative, but now I'm getting to a point where that concern level is really starting to get turned up mm -hmm. and I'm starting to get confused on what we're doing. Exactly. And maybe, you know, a whole lot of this comes from being Falcons fans and seeing the way they've mismanaged those rosters for so many years. <laughs> I'm seeing a whole lot of the same things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm yeah. seeing a whole lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Mind boggling doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, Hypo, he, I mean, doesn't sound like he's managed the roster very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> and you know, maybe he's kind of keeping us kind of on the edge of our seats a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not by design, but it's kind of keeping us on because I'm mean, we've we we have had you know look at the season, the games that are played. We have pretty much had the guys we need to play, but it's always I was in a situation where if one guy goes down, we're, we're scared. Like if we lost a tight end, mm -hmm. we're kind of worried about who's gonna come in. If we lost another, you know, we lost you know Bruce McCoy, Dante Thornton. Um, you know, if another guy went down, you know, we were kind of worried about who was going to be next. So I think this staff has to do a better job of kind of forward looking. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just assume that all our D tackles leave. We don't have anybody. Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Anybody, you know what I mean? So like, an there, point. we have none coming in this class. I don't know anybody we're looking at in the portal. So this class or this staff isn't really looking. I don't feel like they're. I think that we are forward. looking at the uh, at the guy from Middle Tennessee. I think that we are looking okay. at him. Okay. Um, haven't heard about a visit being set up or nothing like that. I actually, I wanted to, I want to say that I looked at his like top schools right now, and you have to take that kind of stuff with a grain of salt coming from some of these guys. But I didn't see Tennessee mentioned, um, you know. So, yeah, we got to do a better job. We've got to do a way better job. So, I mean, you know, you could talk about tackles on on defense, but then let's also talk about quarterback, right? Like. Now, Gaston Moore, as far as I know, is still on this roster. I haven't seen his name entered into the transfer portal. Y'all, please let us know in, in the comments wherever we are incorrect at. We're not trying to throw out, you know, incorrect information. We're just talking about what we know and, you know, what we've seen. Don't know if Gaston Moore is coming or going. If he's staying, you know, that's obviously great. But if he leaves, we're in a really tight situation. We've got a quarterback that did not get to play a lot this season. Some people don't put a whole lot of bearing on them playing but i do like what is it gonna hurt to get these guys some experience you know i think that that's like yeah that's that's astronomically big so you know we didn't do a good job of that last year really anywhere i, I will say outside of the um Back defensive line and the linebackers yeah. okay uh you know secondary did a, a okay job but everywhere else we really just didn't do it you know unless it was absolutely necessary so i feel like that's you know, some growing pains for this staff. Mm. What they've got to do is they've got to stop over promising to some of these older guys and say, hey, look, period, point blank, the best players are going to play. Mm -hmm. And I I'm so sick of making these comparisons to Kirby Smart or to, uh, you know, Nick Saban. But I know for sure with Saban, that's what he's doing. Like, he does not promise positions to nobody. The best players are going to play. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if you've been in school for 10, 15 years. If a true freshman comes in and they can ball, then they're playing. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. we've got to do a way, way, way better job of that. And this season right now, it's looking like it's about to be a kick in the daggum nuts for this whole roster, for this whole program. Um, and I don't remember where I was even going with no, this. Yeah, I I mean, started no, yeah, I mean, no. I mean, you know, we're just pretty much talking about, you know, the roster management. And, yeah. You know, we, we, we're we going to be very young next season, as, you know, especially that, you know. I mean, there's a deal. You know, we don't know who else come back. We don't know about Bruce McCoy, some of mm. those other guys. But probably going to be pretty young at receiver. Um, you know, we got Squirrel White come back. He's probably the only proven guy that's come back. <clears throat> you know, we got mm -hmm. Nimrod, we got Caleb Webb, we got uh, Dan Thornton. Mm -hmm. But what we know from what we saw this season, you can't win with those guys, okay? You need mm -hmm. you need, you need need to elevate. And so those guys, unless those guys get a lot better, we got to get better that's there. That's it. We're going to be young at backer. I mean, we have Keenan Peely, but besides him, we're young. Very young. We're going to be young in the secondary. Um, and then looking at the old line, we're going to be we're probably going to be better in there. But looking forward to 2025, once this whole crop leaves, who's your guys then? Well, yeah, I mean, and that's really that is the biggest deal. You know, so this may not be the absolute worst thing because like we just touched on, mm -hmm. it's going to force this staff to find a way to get more players involved. 
and to get these guys up to speed a lot faster. This is the SEC, right? And, you know, I know that the staff has been here for, what, three years now, um, and it shouldn't have taken you three years to understand this, but, uh, like, you can't just sit on these guys. You've got to put them in there yeah. because this is a fast, physical league, more so than any other league in this entire country, okay? Um, and, unfortunately, players go down. You know, players are going to transfer out. So we've got to have backup plans. We've got to be ready. We've got to look. We've got to get our third string guys. We need to feel comfortable with our third string mm -hmm. guys yeah. being able to go out there and perform on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And that's how you build your depth. You build it from, from the bottom level, okay? Mm -hmm. these, This first group right here, we're going to get them ready, okay? Well, we're going to get everybody ready. But that third group is the group that, you know, maybe they are ready but, you know, there's something that the two groups above them just have a little bit yeah. more of, regardless of their tenure in their class. Well, you know, I'll say this, you know, about my time at Vandy. Mm -hmm. So I came in as true freshman. Three corners came in with me. You mm -hmm. know, we had three guys. We're all pretty talented guys. Mm -hmm. All had different skill sets. But ahead of us, we had two seniors. We had uh, Andre Howe, who played in the NFL for several years. Mm -hmm. uh, his time there, he played for Texans for like six, seven years. And he was our leading interception guy for that time he was there. Then we had a guy, Stephen Clark, who watching both these guys live in practice, you know, for a full season, two seasons, had more ability than Andre Howell. Potentially was better, but he didn't go and play in the CFL, had a good career there. Um, but the way our staff got us involved in the game, the young guys, the freshmen, is, you know, the stars would start. They'd play the first two series, but then we would come in for that third series. You know, we get a series there, and then boom, stars back in for two series. We go in for that next series, stars back in two. So we would get some experience We'd get to see what it's like playing against D1 guys, and we're able to kind of develop better that way. Um, and I just feel like the staff doesn't do enough job, doesn't do a good enough job of that. I think they just pretty much keep the starters in. We don't need any mistakes, any bust. Mm -hmm. You got to have a little bit of growing pains. Let these young guys get in here, and a lot of times they may surprise you. They're gonna, you know, I feel like a lot of players are better in the game than maybe they are in practice. So give these guys a chance. Let us see what these guys are gonna do. Give them a chance to play because that experience, like we've said this whole season, is mm -hmm. invaluable. You got to get these guys some reps, and I think the staff been doing a good job of that. You like I said, John, you know, uh, Coach BJ does a pretty good job getting the freshmen in there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, uh, Gardner, Coach Gardner, does mm -hmm. a good job of rotating guys. But just on the whole, rather receivers, running backs, you know, freaking uh, old linemen, even especially Secondary. especially this season, yeah, old linemen. I mean, you know, we got John Campbell. We got, you know, don't know who the guard's going to be. Well, we got Cooper Mays, hopefully. No, hopefully. We yeah. got uh, Spragans, hopefully. hopefully. We, we got Mincy, hopefully. hopefully. So, you know, that's five guys that are probably pretty definitely gone next season after this season. Yeah, after oh, yeah. They, they don't, they, they won't have any choice. Yeah, besides Mincy. Mincy might, I Mincy, think, has already oh, right But besides those guys, we've got to get the young guys in and figure out a rotation. You know, whether is it every, you know, every third series, every fourth series, whatever it is. But these young guys, Umarov, you know, some of these freshmen, Bennett Warren, freaking Sauter White, uh, uh, what's the guy that has the brother for Oklahoma? Max Max Anderson. Max Anderson. Yeah. They gotta for play. Sure. Aiden Bustle, they gotta play. Yeah, and you know what? I, I I think that, you know, obviously whenever you're talking about the offensive line, it could be a little bit different. It's tough. You know, that that but with like you said, the second year guys, they've got to be able to rotate in. Yeah. You've got to get them on the football field. You can't just let them sit on the bench. Yeah, by because, lane, yeah I mean, because they're going to end up transferring out too, and then we're right back to the portal. So, you know, again, I feel like this uh, – those are my concerns, mm -hmm. but I do feel like Coach Heupel uh, is going to get it figured out. You know, I feel like right now he's learning this stuff on the go. Yeah. And I think that if he could do – if he could have a redo of this entire season – you would have thrown a lot more younger guys out there mm -hmm. because now what we're going to have to do, like you said, people got to go through those growing pains. We're going to have to be going through that with Nico. That's how it's looking right now. And that sucks, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, I mean, you don't want to have a talent like that and be going through those growing pains. Should have been doing that for the past, you know, two seasons. Once we knew that Nico was coming in, we've got to have the foresight to be able to look ahead and get things fixed. Now, mm -hmm. You know, again, we're not the coaches on this staff, okay? There could be a million and one reasons why this player didn't play, that player did, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's about results. And I am very, very, um, you know, nervous about what the results are going to be this season as as the roster stands right now. A lot of people, like I said, are going to have to step up um, big time. A lot of guys that have never even played SEC ball, and this is a more, this is going to be a tougher schedule than we had last season. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, but now, but now, now, I guess, you know, 
you look at the glass maybe half full. Mm -hmm. I do feel good about the the young corners. Yeah, I, feel I think like, they're very talented. I feel like they may be an upgrade, honestly. Like, I mean, just because they're more physically talented now, they mm -hmm. got to learn and get in there and get experience. They're gonna get deep with some stuff. I mean, just think about it. If you have a regular nine to five job, mm -hmm. think about when you started your job versus where you are now. There's things that you encounter every day that a rookie coming into your position, they're not gonna pick up on that stuff. But you be having done it for several years, you get it. Same thing with playing any position, you know, at college level. You know, there's there's things that you've seen it, so you're gonna be better at it, right? So right. we're gonna see some young, you know, kind of growing pains. But I do feel better about their upside. Um, I feel good about the linebackers. Obviously, with Peely coming back, and then we feel great about T. Lander and Carter. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jan Smith did Jan guys Smith as well. Be good. Yeah. And hopefully, the freshmen Spillman and Burns. I feel really good about their upside. Don't expect them to contribute much as mm -hmm. true freshmen, but their upside long term, I feel great about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Feel good about the you know, young guys coming in, Mike Matthews, Brendan Staley. Mm -hmm. But these are guys we got to see in person. You feel great about Nico, but you want to see him for a full 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of things you feel good about, but you're you're just kind of, there's a little bit of apprehension because you haven't seen them for a full 60 minutes playing SC Calvary ball. Um, but I mean, I, I you know, I kind of get in some regards letting a guy like Nico Slaughter go, letting a guy like you know, maybe Gabe Judy uh, go to you know go pro. You know, I could see Gabe I kind of get it just because you, I can see you like yeah, the yeah, guys yeah. behind him. You know what I mean? Yeah, but we'll you know we'll see. How I can see out. it to some degree. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, maybe it, this this could this could be you know like us just trying to create some more room to get well, in some fresher blood. Well, put this some way: Would you athletes? rather have Gabe Judy mm -hmm. and Nico Slaughter for another year, mm -hmm. or would you rather? Uh, Gibson and Mike Matthews transfer out. Oh, I mean, I would much you know rather. I mean? Yeah, I mean, of course. And yeah. I think that's kind of where we're at. These yeah. guys got to play, so we okay. got to give them a chance to play. Yeah. So you know, maybe you know that's a that's a very positive spin. That's a that's a great way for us to uh, end this thing off. But the last thing that I did want to say is that looking at the way that. Uh, you know, just I guess our our point of view, I feel like we will see a lot of these freshmen in this orange, or I'm not in this orange bowl, in this citrus bowl. Yeah. I think that we are going to see a lot of these young guys play. Um, and I think that even if Joe Milton decides to play, that you've got to put Nico out there because I think that Have the to. coaching staff is finally going to start to Have figure to, it out. Man. So, you know, we're going to leave y'all with those two positive thoughts. But thank y'all so much for tuning in. Uh, you know, I do, you know, again, I believe, and I feel like we're on the same page with this, believe that the staff is going to figure it out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that they'll figure it out quick and then they will implement the correct plans to get things fixed, to get this roster fixed. But as always, make sure to like, uh, subscribe, share it with friends, family, and other volunteer fans. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.